On this week's show, we'll be meeting two desperados at the Tough Grit Corral. Not gunslingers, just neighbors facing off in a rule challenge where they show what they're made of. Oh, these guys have got itchy trigger fingers, all right. That's probably because they don't wash their hands. So get ready to witness some rootin', tootin', cowboy hootin', fancy shootin', highfalutin' action. It's reach for the sky, unless you find your hand buried in tough grit. I gotta ask, what in the world are you doing out here practicing your quick draw, Shannon? Well, I'm surprised at you, Caleb. The theme of today's episode is the shootout. But don't worry, I've got your back. In fact, if there's any real guns, I'll be right behind you. Ah, oh, Shannon, I think you misunderstood the theme of this episode. There's no shootout, no real guns. We're using water and grease, not bullets. Oh, grease guns. I got it. Good grief. Just like the kind that got Grandpa. Maybe you've had to clean the caked on grid off your tractor using nothing but a garden hose and a bucket. Or you've laid down serious bucks to repair a damaged tractor engine because of a clogged air filter. Or maybe you've just been photographed by a vindictive neighbor wearing nothing but a smile while you ride your tractor on the back 40. What? Whatever your tractor story is, at some point we've all found ourselves in a big pile of, you guessed it, tractor tough grit. That's where we come in. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. Today, we're only gonna show you how to complete a project. We're gonna give you the right tools to help you get it done right the first time. And we're gonna throw in a little competition between rural neighbors. Tough hombres, hombres good in a gunfight. A grease gunfight, that is. Let's meet them. Our first contestant is Jim Borgerding from Marysville, Kansas. Jim's been farming and ranching since he was 12. He has 300 head of cattle and 2,000 acres. Jim's married with three kids, including his 13-year-old, who is learning to farm. This is a rough and tough cowboy whose motto is, always drink upstream from the herd. And our second contestant today is Lynn Bruna, who also hails from Marysville, Kansas, and has been married 30 years. He has farmed for 40 years, growing milo, wheat, corn, beans, and sunflowers. He also raises cattle. Lynn loves farming and says he wouldn't be anywhere else. This here desperado keeps telling me I'm no cowpoke, because frankly, the cows are sick of it. Gentlemen, welcome to Tough Grit. It's time for you fellas to find out what your project is. Your Tough Grit challenge today is... Power washing a tractor and performing tractor maintenance. If you own or are thinking about getting a tractor, the idea of maintenance might be a little scary, but you don't have to lay down your money at the dealership in order to take good care of your workhorse. You can do most of the maintenance yourself for the cost of the parts. And the best part is, it's not as complicated as you think. Today, we'll clean our tractors using a power washer. We'll also be using a pneumatic grease gun to grease all the crucial points of our tractors in a Wild West style shootout. But don't worry, our experts are here to help you tackle today's tasks. They'll give you advice and coach you on the best way to win your challenges. Our first expert today is Hank Will, Editor-in-Chief of Grit Magazine. Hank's a force to be reckoned with on anything rural. Hank loves to ride the range. Unfortunately, the last time he did it, he broke all four burners on his wife's stove. And joining us today from Tractor Supply Company is Paul Hayes. Paul's the manager of the Tractor Supply Store in Sulphur Springs, Texas. And this guy is smart. For this challenge, he's focused like a laser beam. In fact, you could say he has a one tractor mind. Today, our experts will be giving you tips and coaching you along the way to help you complete your challenges efficiently, accurately, and safely. Whichever one of you does the best will walk away with up to a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Today our contestants and experts will be using some great tractor maintenance tools. We'll use two horsepower, four gallon air compressors, a 17 piece accessory kit, air operated grease guns, and of course, all the appropriate fluids. Air operated gun? The last time I used one of those, I almost took my eye out with a BB. Let's get this project started. And let's go to our experts to find out what to expect from our first challenge. Lynn, one important part of good 
tractor maintenance is keeping your tractor clean. Uh, obviously, if you keep your tractor clean, it's going to look good, but also it's going to help you be able to identify problems in the regular maintenance of your tractor. Oil leaks, uh, fluid leaks, areas that need to be repaired. Uh, you're going to be able to help identify those a lot easier if your tractor's clean and you can actually find those areas. Mm -hmm. Jim, when you've got really tough cleaning jobs to do, the pressure washer makes the perfect tool. Whether you, whether you need to strip the grime off of a tractor that you've been hauling manure with or remove paint from your siding before repainting, it's the, it's the tool to do the job. But what if you want to use soap or some other cleaning agent to loosen that grime? Well, you know, most of these machines, including this one, comes with a, a, an auxiliary tank that you can add a cleaning solvent or a soap to and it will automatically meter into the flow. Really useful if you've got really greasy stuff to remove. Basically, you got two different kinds of pressure washers. You got the hot water pressure washer, which is more of a commercial application. They're very mm -hmm. expensive. Um, the cold water pressure washer is going to do exactly what you need without the expense. Most pressure washers, including the one we're using today, comes with a number of different tips. Each particular tip will deliver a certain volume of water at a certain pressure and at a specific angle. You'll find that some tips will kind of give you a nice fan, which you can use for uh, cleaning off the tractor most effectively. Some will give you a hard straight stream and some will even give you kind of a soft stream if you just want to wet things down a little bit. How do they couple to the to the pressure washer? Is it easy? Can it's pretty easy. You know, it's really straightforward. It's just a hydraulic coupling. You peel the collar back and you can pop the huh? tip out and just installation is the reverse. Awesome. Pressure washers are all about angle. I'm not talking about just the angle of the tip that you're using. I'm talking about the way you approach your project. If you're mm -hmm. trying to soak something down, you want to give a direct approach. You just shoot straight on. But if you're going to try to remove stuff from your project, like taking dirt off of a tractor, mm -hmm. then you're going to want to hit it at about a 45 degree angle. Is there any secrets as far as the distance you should stay away from your equipment when power washing it off? Well then, you, you should always make sure that you're a safe distance so you don't cause any problems with your paint. If you get too close with the, with the tip and you're straight on, you can cause your decals or your paint to get taken off. But another thing you gotta watch is make sure that you're not shooting a, a steady stream of water into your, any area where you've got a seal or a bearing or a compartment where you've got fluids. You don't wanna cross-contaminate any of those things with water. It could cause failure and real problems for you in the future. When you're cleaning something like a mud cake tractor, you don't wanna aim the blast of water straight at the, at the dirt because you, you could hammer little bits of it into the paint. You kind of want to take and give it a, an angled sweeping motion so you're, you're pushing it off instead of uh, pressing it in. You also want to be sure that you don't spray water into the air intake of the tractor or, or any engine because uh, when you start it up you could hydro lock it and seriously damage it. Uh, you also don't want to uh, apply too much pressure on soft things like hoses or you could possibly cut them and you definitely don't want to aim it at your skin because there's a good chance you'll blast right through it. All right, now that we know the ins and outs of the power washers, let's get down to the first challenge. Both teams will be washing their tractors with the equipment provided, switching the tips when they need to. Each man has 15 minutes to work max. Whoever finishes first wins this challenge. However, at the end of 15 minutes, Caleb is going to inspect those tractors to make sure they're really clean. And if you've damaged your machine, well, you're going to be penalized. It's not Saturday night, but let's give these tractors a bath anyway. The coaches can give you tips and help you along the way, but they can't do any of the actual washing. Remember, whoever wins this challenge will walk away with at least $500 to spend at Tractor Supply Company. Good luck, gentlemen. Ready, aim, fire! Now the main thing you want to do is make sure that you got water pressure to your unit. If you turn it on without that, you can burn up your pump. That's great advice, Paul. That's how a lot of machines get torn up. Okay, you're up and going. And they're both off. Perfect, perfect. You know, I think you can get away without soaking it, except for where it's really thick. Give it a quick soak and then they'll come back with more pressure and try to knock everything off. They're just soaking it down now. Get it all soaked down. Soak it down. All you want to do is soak down the dirt right now. Get it all soaked down good. Get it wet. It'll be easier to spray off later. There you go. But well, what do you know? There was a color underneath that muddy tractor. Jim and Lynn are both aiming to win our power washing shootout. But who will make a clean getaway with our prizes? Find out when we come back with Tough Grit. You've been living life out where the pavement ends now for a couple of years, and your machine shed is no longer empty. Daily life is a joy, and for the most part, pretty smooth, but now your tractor has sufficient hours to require service, the mower's cut is really ragged, and the tires on the utility vehicle go flat overnight. In some ways, it feels like the party's over. What can you do? 
Now is the time to take a good look at the service and owner's manuals for your machines, grab some tools, and face down those routine maintenance monsters. Once you engage your machines more intimately, you'll save yourself a ton of money, feel proud, and enjoy knowing that your machinery will go the distance. Tackle a few fluid fills, filter changes, engine oil changes, mower blade installations, and tire repairs, and you can move on to replacing torn tie rod seals on your tractor's steering axle or adjusting the throttle linkage. As your experience and confidence build, don't be afraid to take on a clutch adjustment or even a clutch replacement on something smaller like a garden tractor. For the more ambitious, you might consider taking in a homeless old tractor and giving it a new life in your shop. If you fix it up too nicely, you might not save a ton of dough, but make it a project that your daughters and sons can enjoy with you, and that machine's value will become priceless, no matter what the dollar cost. Welcome back, folks. Our two teams are busy power washing their tractors, trying to get all the baked on grime and mud off without getting water where they don't want it. Whew, I just chafe thinking about that problem. Looks like we're closing in on clean tractors, and we'll soon have a winner. Change out your tip. Lynn changing out his there tip. There you go. Right, they switch to the yellow tip and go. As is Jim. Try the white one. Now remember, leave those decals intact. Oh, yeah, see? 45, remember? 45 degree angle. There you go. You notice they've changed tips. Rule of thumb is usually a good tip is about 15 to 20 percent. 45. There you go. See? See, it just sweeps it right off that paint. That is a lot of mud. Looks like Lynn's going with a top-down approach. Uh-oh. That was a nasty accidental spray. Hey, hey I got to play fair now. Work that fender down. Yeah. Good. Bucket. Yeah, go for the bucket and then get your axle. Stripping the mud off the tires by hand. To get your tractor clean, you're gonna have to get your hands dirty. Sometimes you gotta do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, I'll get them tire threads. So tires are a mess. Yeah, just give it a quick rinse. Just give it one quick more rinse. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. Good job, boys. Show them down. Great job, right. gentlemen. Come on down. Right in here, fellas. Well, you both handled your sprayers like pros. Great job. Caleb, what's the verdict? Well, both of you, way to get down in the dirt. Both the bodies look clean. Hmm. This one came down to tires and how much was untouched on the tires. Lynn, you had three tires that are pretty much untouched and your bucket's just a little dirtier than Jim's. Uh, Jim, you just had a couple tires left to go. You just won yourself a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Congratulations, Congratulations there, Jim. Good job. Hey, since you handled that sprayer so well, if I give you five bucks, will you give Hank here the old once-over? I can handle that. All right. Next up, our contestants will be using their pneumatic tools to perform some tractor maintenance. Find out who will score a bullseye with a grease gun and who will get all oiled up with nowhere to go right after this. Well, glad you're back with us. Today on Tough Grit, we're taking care of the workhorses of the farm and ranch, our tractors. We've just finished with the power washing, and now our two teams are getting geared up for some tractor maintenance education. So here's Hank and Paul with tire, filter, and fluid maintenance info to keep the giddy up in your tractor's get along. Lynn, a lot of times uh, when doing maintenance on your tractor, you're going to have to take the wheels off. Mm -hmm. um, nothing makes it easier than using an air impact wrench. You use an air compressor, some compressed air in this impact wrench, and you're done that quick. Uh, it, it saves stress and, and, and time. It saves stress on your back uh, and then trying to bust it loose with a four-way lug wrench, um, and it makes it a lot easier. Now, of course, when you go back with the with the uh, the lug nuts, back a lot of manufacturers specify torque, and you mm -hmm. want to torque everything down with a, with a specified torque wrench if it's uh, recommended by your manufacturer of your tractor. Jim, one of the most important types of preventive maintenance you can perform on your tractor is to be sure that the air filter is clean and free-flowing. Some tractors have a, a permanent or a semi-permanent element, and in those particular cases, you'd, you'd simply remove it and, and blow it off with a blast of air from the compressor using a device like this. In this particular machine, we've got a replaceable element. It's a, it's a corrugated paper device. You can, if it's really loaded up with dust, you can, you can blow it off for some temporary relief, but if it's torn or really loaded up, you want to replace it. Why is a clean air element so important to the 
operation of your tractor, right? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, the tractor needs to breathe. It's got to get a, the right amount of air, the right amount of oxygen, so that it will efficiently and cleanly combust the, the uh, fuel and, and generate horsepower for you. You also want to prevent uh, the, the machine from pulling in any grit uh, that will actually wear down your, your cylinder walls and, in some cases, your valve train really rapidly, and that will lead to a huge, expensive uh, repair job. One of the easiest things to do on a tractor is identify where your grease certs are and, and, and keep it greased. It's the easiest thing to do, but it's going to have the greatest impact on you on a long-term basis. By greasing these parts, you're going to have less wear, you're going to have less money paying for new parts that would wear out if you didn't grease it. It's simple. All you need is a grease gun. You put the grease gun tip on your grease cert, you pull the trigger, and you shoot grease into the part. It's as simple as that. Changing the engine oil or the universal hydraulic slash transmission oil is as easy as running the fluids up to temperature. Basically, just let the tractor run for a while till they get good and warm. Then you actually pull the plugs, let the fluid drain out, take off the old filter. Here you can see the, the old engine oil filter right here. Here's a new one. You basically spin that on. And for the transmission hydraulic system, you actually remove the filter here and, and source a new one, spin it on in place, and then just top the fluids back off, start the engine, recheck the levels and you should be good to go. So basically what we've done is we've greased our tractor, we've replaced our filters, we've topped off our fluids, now we're ready to start the tractor up to see how she runs. What if we find a leak? What's next? Well, if you find a leak, you got to determine where the leak's coming from. That's a really good point. You want to park your tractor in an area where you can determine the leak if it's coming out of the tractor. You want to find out where it's coming from, then you go back to that source. If it's coming from one of your filters, then you just want to go ahead and turn it just a little bit tighter. Make sure that it seats up. If it's coming from one of your plugs, you want to make sure that you tighten it a little more. Make sure that you're stopping the leak by having good gaskets and having good seating by your plugs. Jim, one of the advantages of performing your own routine maintenance is that it causes you to actually poke your head into places where you might not always poke. And uh, if you're lucky, you'll detect small problems before they become big problems. You can decide to service them yourself if you're up to it, or you can hire an expert to give you a hand. And now it's on to challenge number two. Our contestants are going to use their newfound know-how to perform some tractor maintenance. Each contestant will take their pneumatic grease gun and hit all the points on the tractor. The experts have to stay in the middle. They can't walk along and point them out. The first contestant to hit all 24 points will win the second challenge. Our contestants have their grease guns loaded and ready, but this here farm ain't big enough for the both of them. Good luck, gentlemen, and may the best shot win. Ready, ready aim, aim, fire! fire. All right, so around the back. Start from the front and work your way to the back. Okay. All right. Who will find their fittings first? And who will gain glory with their grease guns? And who will be the lubricating loser? Don't leave. Stay tuned to Tough Grit. If you're still on the fence about doing your own machine maintenance, start with a few of the things we showed you today. If you're planning on becoming familiar with how your tractor is put together, the single most important investment you can make is to buy a copy of your tractor's repair manual if you don't already have it. Most tractor manuals have clear instructions with diagrams to help you perform routine maintenance and replace parts that wear. If it seems confusing, don't be afraid to ask your experienced neighbors and friends or come down to your local tractor supply store. We'll be more than happy to give you a hand with any questions you've got. As far as parts go, having a spare air filter on hand is invaluable. If yours should fail, your tractor's a one-ton paperweight until you can replace it. If you've got one on hand, you can replace it in a couple of minutes and save a trip to town. Same goes for the fluids. If you have some handy, not only will you be ready when the 50-hour mark rolls around, but you can check the levels every so often and top them off as necessary. If you've already got a grease gun laying around your shop and the grease you need on a shelf somewhere, you'll be a lot more likely to keep your equipment greased. Spending a couple minutes every month or so like this can help your tractor last much, much longer, and it'll save you a bunch of money in repairs. We're in the final moment of the tractor maintenance challenge, and both teams are going strong. Okay. okay. All right. Now you want to look at any place where two pieces of metal come together. You got grease. Okay, good job. You also want to look always on the areas of the tractor that, that steer the front end. Just get on your back, you'll see him. You'll find three, three pivot points on the pedal. One kind in the middle, one on each side. How about your tie rod in on your tire? Good, 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 good. All right, let's work on the loader now. Go ahead and start, start working on that arm.
Yeah, get the tie rod in. There you go. And the pivot. Sweet. Did you get the back one? Yeah. Yep, good. Okay. One. Two. Hey. Start working on that loader now. Yep, there's one there. That's good. Every pivot. Every pivot. Your linkages, anything that rotates, twists, turns. Like your adjustable link on your right three-point arm. And time, that's 24. That's 24, time. Great job, gentlemen, come Good on job, in here. Good job, boys, come on in. All right, nice shooting, Tex. All right, Caleb, what's the verdict this time? Oh, uh, it's pretty impressive to see you two crawling all over those tractors. Jim, you just finished in a little quicker time. Just won yourself your second $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Thank Company. You. Congratulations, yes. there's two gift cards from Tractor Supply Company for you, Jim. Congratulations. And Lynn, did you have a good time? It was fantastic. All right, well, you did a great job, Thank too. You. And if you're sitting at home thinking, I've got the grit to compete on the Rural America Challenge, here's how you can become a contestant on Tough Grit. To sign up, go to toughgrit.com and click on the I can do that button or look for the advertisement in Grit Magazine. Don't wait, sign up today. So now you know almost everything you need to know about power washing and performing some important maintenance on your tractor. And if you'd like to learn more, visit toughgrit.com. Glad you could join us. Look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, if you have grease gun, you will travel. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. And if you see us coming, you know you're in Tough, Tough Grit. Grit. On next week's episode, we address that age-old topic that every parent must eventually explain to their children. That's right. We're talking about the birds and the trees. Next week's episode is for the birds, and we couldn't be happier. We have two contestants ready to show their backyard know-how and learn even more as they compete to see who can best assist Mother Nature in spreading her branches and providing for our feathered friends. On next week's episode of Tough Grit.